This is exciting. What I have in this box is going to save me 50% on my electrical rate. Well, not a full 50%, of course, but it is going to save me 50% on the charging rate for our Tesla Model Y. What it is, is a new car charger from our local utility, Wisconsin Public Service, that connects to the internet and allows us to take advantage of off-peak rates. So when we purchased the vehicle, I went ahead and got the Tesla mobile charger, which we've been using at our home to charge the vehicle any time of day. Typically though, it's been at night and after using the mobile charger for about three months now, it's going to be easy for us only to charge at night between midnight and 8 a.m. when we can take advantage of those off-peak rates. So that is 6.6 .6 cents per kilowatt hour. Current flat rate that we're paying is 14.6 cents per kilowatt hour. So we're basically gonna cut that rate in half. This will free up our Tesla mobile charger to basically stay in the vehicle. I'm gonna put it in the front and we can travel around with it in case we need to plug in to a wall outlet. Got our case here. I'll just tuck our mobile charger in the way up here and forget about it. Unless we have a case where we have to use it. So like most things in life, this isn't just a straight 50% reduction in your kilowatt per hour rate to charge your electric vehicle. You have to opt into the program, which is $8 a month. Then you either have to buy this charger made by juice box for 600 and some dollars, or you can lease it for $12 a month. I've cho chosen to lease it for $12 a month. Based on that price differential, it makes sense. Uh, it takes a few years at that rate to actually pay for this and who knows if it breaks or something else comes out into the future as electric vehicles and their infrastructure is rapidly evolving. So let's take a look at this thing. We've got a plate to mount it. Instructions. Oh, and then our conductor. So this thing can be either indoor or outdoor mounted. I'm gonna mount it indoors, because I can. Oh boy, this thing's hefty. They did ask me the vehicle type, so I'm very interested to see what we have for a connector here. Because if it's not a Tesla connector, I'm gonna to have to buy an adapter for it. So. And it's not. I think I do have an adapter that came with the mobile charger, let's see. Now, and now I remember I spoke wrong. This didn't come with the mobile charger. This came with the vehicle and it was just kind of in the trunk in this plastic bag. And it is the right one. So your Tesla does come with the adapter. We've got what it takes. Now we've got our Tesla adapter on there and this will work. Now we just gotta get this thing mounted. And the big thing that this does is connect to Wi-Fi so that the utility knows when we're using the electricity uh, to get us that rate. Okay, this looks pretty simple. All we have to do is hang this, hang this bracket on the wall. And then there's two screws that go into the back of the charger itself. And you basically just the screw heads go into this recess and then you slide it down, it locks into place. Here's my outlet. Um, here's my outlet. I've got a whole series on how I finished off my garage, put this galvanized steel below and this plating on the corners and kind of a chair rail. So this gives a very handy location to mount things. I don't have to find studs or deal with the drywall. 
<clears throat> I can just screw right to these plates that I put on the corner. Right here, this is behind the impact screen for my golf simulator that I have in the middle of my garage. Um, it's not the perfect location, but it'll work. and kind of be hidden behind the screen a bit. Um, but anyway, gonna get this thing mounted. I went ahead and uh, changed out the screws. The one that come with this are basically garbage, so. Uh, these work a lot easier. All right, we've got our wall plate on. Now all we have to do is just take these two machine screws, thread them into the back of here, and it says leave a couple threads exposed, and then lock this thing into place on that wall bracket. Now, we just have to plug it in. <clears throat> the nice thing about one of these more home chargers, uh, Tesla home charger too, unfortunately that's not an option because it doesn't work with the utility, but they've got the built-in mounting and unit where we can hang the charge cable. That's pretty handy. So we're good to go, we've got power, now we just have to connect this to the internet and our phone. So there's a QR code I'm gonna scan. We'll get this thing set up. The only negative here is there is a place to hold the end of the charge cable, but with our adapter on it, it doesn't work. So maybe we could take it off and set it there and then not too bad. All right, I've got the app. Wants to know where I live. Gotta set up a login, of course. Confirm your email. Account is now active and ready to be used. Now I have to complete my account to start using the box. Phone number, address. So what's unclear at this point is how this connects to the utility, but we'll see if that becomes clear at some point. Add a charger. Scan the QR code. There we go. On the charger. It's on the side of it. That was pretty easy. Configure via Wi Fi. If the charger was already connected to power before this step, disconnect from power and reconnect, then press next. All right, so I need to connect Wi Fi to the charger. Juice net. It's not showing up. There it is. Okay, back to the app. All right. Configuring. So this is to connect the charger to the Wi-Fi. You gotta connect to the charger. Tell it your Wi-Fi network. Give it the password for your Wi-Fi network so it can get on there. All right, I didn't put in the right password apparently. It's always the hard part, remember, remembering what your Wi-Fi password is. What? It's the right password. Okay, now connected. Charger name, let's call it home. How do you want to start charging? Unlock to charge, start charging by authorizing it from the app, or start charging by simply connecting the cable to your car. I'll just say connect to charge. I'm not gonna have any <clears throat> other people try to use it. All right, that so says the white light settings are applied. Add a vehicle. All right, well, that's gonna take some work. Once a VIN number and everything. Smart charging schedule. So this is where we wanna change it to only charge from midnight to 8 a.m. Just to be safe, we'll say 12, 10, and at 7 a.m. So I guess I'll add the VIN number, add the car. I will say Tesla has some of the easiest to read VIN numbers on any vehicles, normally you're kind of squinting and you got to look at this. You can actually just read it. White letters on a black background, what a concept. 
Funny it doesn't even have the correct version of Model Y in here, which I've seen quite a bit. The, the standard range all-wheel drive is new for 2023. <coughs> so we'll just say standard range rear-wheel drive. No, well, that doesn't allow us to pick the right year. Why is it not letting me continue? What's the dang license plate number? So it's not immediately obvious how the utility is going to connect to this charger and make sure I'm getting the reduced rate. Maybe they have some sort of IT backdoor into this, which is probably the case. So I might just ask them that from the utility, there's a person who handles this. They call it a pilot program for electric vehicles and to get this rate. Uh, but we've got our box all set up. We can set charge limits in the box, but I'm just going to use the Tesla app for that instead of this box. I think it talks to the car uh, and works better. So it looks like I'm almost done. We're going to try this out tonight and see how it works. All right, that's better. I don't have to use the thing. I'll just leave the adapter on there. Let it hang like that. So I've been using the juice box now for a few days and it's working perfectly with the schedule set in the box. But there's a couple little things that just aren't quite as convenient as the Tesla charger. So the way the Tesla chargers, the way Teslas work is once you've got the charger installed, it locks it into place and you can't remove it unless you unlock the charge port. And on the Tesla charger, there's a button on it here that you just press it will turn the T white and that means you can unlock it. Because this is not a Tesla charger, we either have to go on the screen of the vehicle and unlock the charge port or in the app here, we can click unlock charge port. And it gives us the white Tesla logo and that means we can take it out and then it automatically closes the charge door for us. So that's not too bad. You just have to use your app or the screen, but it's just not quite as convenient as having the button on the charger. Now, to open the charge ports a little bit easier, again, you can use your app, the lightning bolt on your app or on the screen to open the charge port. Or if you've got the app running on your phone and you're within Bluetooth range close to the vehicle, like we are here, you can press, you should be able to press on the lower corner of the charge port here and have it open. But I found it'll be a little finicky. But if we've got our phone out, we can hit the lightning bolt on our phone, it opens, and we can put it in there. I was a little bit concerned about the size and the weight of this charging handle. The Tesla unit is much more compact, the design's just a little more refined, and there's not as much weight hanging out here. And then you put the Tesla adapter on the end of this, and it gets pretty long, and I was worried that there'd be a little bit of weight on here and it wouldn't seat that well, but actually, um, there's no issues with that. It, it works just fine. So the big thing, the cost savings, unfortunately I have to wait until the next billing cycle. So I did confirm with the Wisconsin Public Service, the utility, they can see this unit. I didn't have to grant them access or connect with my account or anything like that. Um, they know where this unit is, I guess, and, and have a back door in it with the, the charge company. They've arranged that already. So all I have to do is use it and skip and use it on the schedule of 12 a.m. to 8 a.m. So all I have to do is use it and use it on the schedule of 12 a.m. midnight to 8 a.m. to take advantage of basically half cost rate. If you like this video and you want to see if those savings are actually realized, subscribe to my channel and I will provide a cost of ownership update as soon as I get actual information from this new charger and my electric utility bill. Thanks for watching. Adios.